Pure Bros the Carpool is sponsored by Peter Donnelly, 21 Coaching, the very best in the business. To find Peter, follow the Instagram link that will be at the bottom of the video throughout the show. Hi folks, how you doing? And welcome along to Pure Boys. This is Pure Boys the Carpool. We are about 30 seconds from James McGrory Park tonight. We take Ian Kennedy, St Rock's manager. A wee drive, I was going to say hostage, but a wee drive just to find out a bit more uh, about Ian and his football and journey, his plans uh, for the season onwards with St Rocks. His uh, we'll chat about his successes um, with West Park last season, and um, we'll touch on uh, Sunday centenary celebrations. Let's head. We will find out. There he is. Ian, so first of all, mate, welcome along to Pure Boys, the carpool, or the horsey type situation, whatever you want to call it. Um, for any viewers that are watching that don't know you, um, or your background, tell us a little bit about yourself, football career, managing career, who you've been with, etc, etc. So basically, um, for the football side of it for myself, mate, I'm, I'm one of these boys that, before you've all heard the stories about, I'm one of these boys that was great here. The Robin Mull Black Hill. Right. As a youth product was no no by me said but by everybody else said that I was a very, very good football player and then all the rest of it and yep. went to Celtic as a, as a youth product and um, through different things being fair the scheme and mentality probably not right mate. I've okay. day with a lot of people there and absolutely wreck it. Um, <laughs> left, I was at Celtic for a few years and everybody was talking highly about it, it was not that kind of one and then I got to maybe 16, 17 and started liking drinking women like everybody else and Aye. then you start messing about and start doing things that you're not supposed to and yeah. I, I probably just gave up on it and then at 18 a lot of the junior teams were coming to try and get me and to try and sort it out and say right you can play here, man. Yep. You're good enough, and all the rest of it. But if it should be told, me, I was a boy for the scheme, and I didn't actually care too much. So I was probably a good player that just went to ruin man. But so you think like so? It's not just a problem in the east; it's a problem kind of throughout Scotland. That you know, and I think we're probably better just being honest with each other because uh, you know right. I'm, I'm I'm fair off at rough area of Glasgow as well. Don't get me wrong; I probably wasn't as a good football player as you mate but um, I've seen it you know and every player's seen it with somebody else you know um, it, it's maybe been drink drugs yeah. sex drugs rock and roll sort of thing you know where you think you're the you're the big man and you think oh, it doesn't really matter if you don't apply yourself yeah. that it's going to happen anyway 100% mate so I was we were obviously I'm black girl as such yep. and then so my mates were all going out and on a carry on and all that and I was just like I'm not going to train tonight. Yeah. I'm off. Yeah, well, I was kidding on to my man and dad, I was going to train and just yeah, well, was... going out with my mates mate and the mentality was just so wrong that it, it just messed us. So the only thing I will say is for, for every bad thing you do you should learn of it and I learned of it with my two boys so I made sure that that wasn't going to be the case with them and that doesn't happen and just Try and do everything right because there's an opportunity there. You must take it. Uh, I mean, Kendall, you what age are you now, mate? So I'm 15, sir. 15. So, oh, so you said that yeah. just at the start there, right? Aye. Aye. So that that's given you kind of a bit a bit of time to sort of have kids. Are you married? Aye. Aye. So have kids get married and kind of a wee bit of realization in life that um, you probably do look back now and go, or, or do you look back now and go, fuck, man, my life could have been a lot better or you know, I could have had a better life for my family and my kids. Do you, do you have any regrets in terms um, of where you were, you know, at 15, 16, 17 or whatever? Probably, mate. I mean, so again, mate, I say, I say, I say that I use this phrase a lot, right? And people will laugh, but I say all, all the time, like, self-praise is no praise as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't say, I know I was a decent football player. Yeah. But I just saw it as a boy with a born for the scheme and didn't think yep. too much about it. It's other people that tell me that what I was when I meet people, my boys are with me and they meet people at my age for everywhere and they'll say fucking waste them. So I mean for your your sort of football inside when you were younger, um 
and you know, step into management. Um, I, I'm 100% that my uh, I did a bit of reading, not 100% okay. sure I started amateur level. Yes. Um, but it wasn't the best part, was it, to begin with? No, so, well, uh, it goes back before that. Yep. So, um, so my young, my oldest boy, who's 27 and now, he was going into West Park yep. as a five year old. And like most, believe it or not, right, so it, it actually works a wee bit, sustains working. So I, I was starting to grow up. Yep. So I'm, I'm 24 or whatever I'm at that point. Becoming a man. I'm starting to grow up and I'm starting to realise what life happens. Yep. It's about. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to. People kept saying to me about doing football coaching and that because I was good with boys and all that kind of one. And I thought, right, okay, I'm going to get us a go. And then the wife took the boy, believe it or not, on a Saturday or morning up to West Park. Yep. And it was just a nursery football. It was just a run around, and I was going up there and to watch him for a few weeks and stuff. And the guy said to me, "Big man, I felt you know you were a player and all that and started yep. to talk." And the wife said to me, "You wanted to start getting in here, and mate, that was the start." So I started there. He was five or six year old, and I started doing it with the nursery wings. Went through my coaches' badges right away. Um, started getting into it, and for there, I took that team for six year old. To the end of 21s. Wow, that's, that's a long time. Yeah, that's phenomenal when you think back. Yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, there's no aye. many people going to do that now. But so I went there, done sixes all the way through, and then obviously day two year at 19s and three year at 21s. Yeah. Um, done all that. So I done West Park all the way through to that, and then in between that, Falkirk had asked me to come in and do scouting for them. Aye, okay. So I was doing scouting for Falkirk. Um, for youth products and um, all that stuff and Kenny Shields was the manager at the time oh, right, okay. and I used to go up there and do training sessions where you would watch training sessions and they would tell you what kind of players they're looking for and what they want so I was doing that along with then coaching at West Park um, as, as youths and then my 21's team so I always had a believe it or not it's, it's mad how things work out as much as I'm a rock boy West, yeah. West Park had a bond with Peter Sill, for whatever reason, unknown to me why, I don't understand that anyway, but they did. Um, so we used to put boys down to Peter Sill all the time. So my 21s were going down there regular, and we would play them a lot. And so at the end of 21s, I think five or something, had left us to go to there, because other ones got the other junior teams and all the rest of it. And I was just like, ah, what did I do now? Where do we go here? Yeah. I've been here for, they were bloody five year old, and then, so I then decided that I was going to take a wee bit of time with it. I said I'll just I'll take a time with it. And I think I lasted about a month. So West Park, yeah, uh, with, with the younger ones, you've obviously West Park uh, as a football team were accepted into the West of Scotland yep. two years ago, yep. right? Um, and essentially, I became a senior team in, in the tenth tier of Scottish football as it would be probably. Yep. Um, how did you guys go about that? Because that's, that's that's not an easy task. No, it was some gone. So, so first of all, after I left the 21s, he said, uh, I said that was it. I said, yep. I'm not doing the youth again. For me, in my opinion, it's, in, it's only my opinion, but for me, see boys of the new in the west of Scotland, between the ages of 17 and 21, yeah, they're telling you how to play football. Aye. And it, the minute that happens, that's it's gone. So for me, I was I said to them, I'm not going to go back to that. I would rather go back to young, really young, than 17 to 21. So I'm, aye, so, so I'm, so I'm not doing that. I said, I've had enough of that. It's mere fights in football. I said, so <laughs> right, so that's it. So then I left again. I stopped. I stopped for six months or something. I said, I'm not going to do it. And Shettleston Juniors asked me in. Right. Shug Kelly. So Shug Kelly's team. So me and Chug were. I had the pre-season. Played with a brilliant pre-season, never got beat, well a magic. And then leading up to the first game with Shug, with Paul up and let's say we just fell out a bit, there was a mix up on how yeah. how this was going to work. Aye. And Shug's a nice guy, I speak to him now, but it didn't work for us. So I left again. And then that was me, I was sitting in the house and the guy that runs West Park, Andy Burns, he's in charge of the whole operation. He phoned me and said, Andy's still in charge, isn't he? Still, still there. Andy's, man. A, man. Andy's I mean, a nice guy, I've met Andy before. Andy's a cracking guy, real good guy football guy really cares yep. and he phoned me up and says look boss I want you back I want you to come back in and um, take an amateur team if if possible yeah and I says 
cool mate, I said well let's go with the amateur team, so we went with an amateur team and right away I said to Mandy I'm not going into an amateur Saturday morning or anything like that, I said if you want to do it we go for the tap end. You go do it so, properly, yeah. So we did it right, so we went for the Central Scottish which was known to be the best at that time. Yeah. And we won the Central Scottish, so when we won the Central Scottish Andy then says I think the next step is, and I says, well, there's only one next step, mate. I said, it's about the club getting us over. Aye. So Andy then done all the necessary details, all the necessary secretary work, and we got brought in by the West, and they said, yeah, accepted. And we went, Probably. Oh, I think we were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were Aye. surprised. We were, I think we thought about it, and we thought, we'll I try think, this, no really think we'll get it. And then I think. Um, I think West Park done it at the right time, you know, because obviously the old juniors had disbanded and the West of Scotland were trying to make a, a, a name for themselves and and that that Division Four, which listen and I don't mean it, I've said this quite openly, um, you know whether that be in social media or, or, or two people um, within that league, I, I think it is a glorified amateur league, right? But there is fucking some very very good teams in that league and. It's actually even more impressive that the first season an amateur team that came into it won it for that and then an amateur team that's come into it the second season has won it so I think that actually shows that um, that that type of leak is, is doing exactly what it's supposed to do and I still think that that leak, uh, you know you're looking at the teams in it the now I know you're obviously not there anymore but you know the top three is occupied by three Renfrewshire based teams, you know, and uh, St Peter's and, and, and Glenville, etc. All really sort of young, young teams. It's been a huge credit to yourself and the staff that you have actually went in and and won it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you just picked Kill cool to it, didn't you? Is that right? They'll say that. They'll yeah. say that. <laughs> uh, listen, man, so I think you'll say we'll, 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 we'll talk quite a lot. So I'm quite friendly with Belly, who, who you obviously yeah. you, you, you'll, you'll know very well, and yeah. and he kind of said the same thing. Look, Paul, we're, we don't, we're not going to be cocky about it, but we, we know if we beat Kill the game's over. The game's over. I said if you lose more than two goal, two games, you don't win the league. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the way I've always seen it. Aye. I've always seen I it. Like that. We've won the league. I mean, I won it at West Park at 19s, 21s. Whatever, every time we've won it, and we've won it a few times, every time we've done it, you always, you only ever lose two games. Aye. Maybe get away with three, depending on the circumstances, right? So, we get beat with Cole Scythe that day, and I said to him, we can't get beat again. I said, we can't get beat again, lads. This is it. We beat again, but it's game over. It's game. I said, so, let's not get beat again. And I just put that to him. And we just quietly made every single week. I was watching all the different podcasts and that, and people were sending me clips to their chats and saying, nobody's even mentioned West Park. But in the background, we could sit and sit, I'm sitting there going like that. We won by three, but I point ahead of them. Right? <laughs> and I just kept thinking this. I kept saying it. And today, I said, look, never mind all the noise. Just keep sitting there. Let them take all the credit they know. Because at the end of the day, who takes the prize in me is what matters. Aye. That's it. I said, so let's go. So leading up until the game at Hunters Hall with Kilsyth, we were, we knew, I knew if we beat them, I knew that they would crumble Aye. and we would absolutely go and destroy the rest. And, and, and your heart's your heart, you just kind of like got a feeling that it's, that it's was, no it being cocky, it's Aye. known, I know the attitude of the players, I knew what they were about. And on that day, Kilsyth, then we beat Kilsyth for nothing. Hunter's and it was a convincing for nothing, I oh, believe, because there was he's I'm a hundred percent sure if when I spoke to Belly he said that you know you could seven have, or eight, I, said it. And, and he did say that to be fair, he said that it could have been, you know, eight and, and nobody would have batted an eyelid about it. It was a right it was a right result at the time. Kendall, two notable results uh, in that season. Um I would like to congratulate you on the the game against Ben Bob yep. in the cup. Um probably West Park's best ever result. Would that, would that, correct me um, if I'm wrong, would, would aye, that be the best? Aye, aye, aye. Given, given Ben Bob's nature, aye. where they were at the time, you know, they were sitting, um, they were sitting, I think, mid-table in the first division at that point, um, not looking like they'd be promoted, to be fair, yep. but um, still to, to beat Ben Bob 4-2, I think it was, uh, on the day, um, is a very notable one, and... The reason why I bring this one up um, was uh, the game against St Caddox 
um, because I was there, I was involved with St Caddox at that yeah. point, I was their media guy at that, and I was actually very, very impressed. Um, I think we, I think at that point it was 2-0 uh, to St Caddox the first half, yeah. and you guys got a couple of goals, quick, quick fire the second half, and really gave us a fright, but more notably, didn't they kind of quiver away to a team that was three leagues above you and, and, and wanted to play football, which was which was really impressive. Um, so, well done in that. Um, so, obviously, you've done what you've done with West Park. Yep. And Division 3 is around the corner. Yep. We obviously don't get to Division 3 because you um, take the job at, at the Rock on the 29th of June. Um, divulge your reasons why you took the job because for, for me, on the outside looking in, I'm thinking surely at West Park to go up, he's, he's got unfinished business there. He, he's going to want to take. I, I, Gav, now that I know that you're a Black Hill boy and you're from the area, then maybe the Lurus and Rock might have been uh, too hard to resist. But you, you put your spin on it. Well, so so first and foremost, we used to. So we West Park. Um, there was always this problem with where are we going to go next? Yeah. Because the stadium is obviously Hunters Hall's Hunters Hall, and, I, and there, there was talk about if you get to a certain that leak then you're not allowed to use that facility. That's right. You have to use another facility, blah blah blah. And then when I was having talks with West Park and, and, and by the way the day I was an amazing job. I do do. But if the truth be told, one of the biggest things they were worried about was how we got to stadium level. Yeah. How do we get to that how do we get to this and all the rest Listen, of it? I think that would be, you know, take take three out of the equation. Yeah. Um in that league and, and, and the th- uh, you know your delights your colleagues and stuff like that I think that would be a worry for any team that's come up and you know even St Caddox, St. Caddox are playing in the, the Premier League out of, out of Bember you know they don't have their own home and, and, and I know that, that, that that's been worked on yep. but that's a, that's a worry everywhere I go to the office at Rocks and I, they said um, can you come down and well, speak to you so I then made West Park aware of this um, this uh, was uh, after James McKnight was relieved of his duties, I think, or he no. hadn't he quite decided at that point. Am right, I right? So, that? That's so nice. I'll, put, I'll put that right in on it. <laughs> because, so what happens was then, so they went to, they phoned me, asked me to come down for an interview and all that. Right, and okay. I, I went and done that. Um, obviously, they're asking me questions, I'm asking them questions, offered the job there and then. And I said, I can't refuse that job. But, I didn't tell them at the time. I said I need to go speak to West Park because right. I've been there 20 years I've and I'm not just walking out on something. I said you just need to understand that I'm actually building or we are building a real legacy as such yep. for West Park and I've been in this level. I said and I can take that somewhere. I said and I need to know that I've used her right for me as much as I'm right for you. So I said so if this is a short term for you then I'm not really interested, this has to be a long term project at the Rock. And we went through all that and then they were, I liked what they told me, they liked, I was, they obviously liked what I was saying to them, so we went to the next bit and I went to West Park and said to them, look, I've been offered the job and I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm Faye here, came here as a supporter, when West Park didn't play, I came to watch the Rock. That's my team, it's as simple as that. So. When I came in here, they've, they've offered me the job and I said I can't refuse it, it's into the championship as such, first division, how are we going to go about it? So, I came in here and I said to Andy at West Park, I said obviously I've had all these boys all my days. Yep. They've all came back to me, the ones that are left to join Peter Sullivan or that, all came back to me f- for nothing. Yeah. So, Andy knows when I leave to go to the Rock, these boys are going to come and all. He Aye. just knows that if I want to take them. And you actually seen, you, you, you did see that because on the 29th of June. They were all coming down. Or, you've or seen plan. the announcements and things like and that. And Andy knew this. So I said to Andy, um, you know what's going to happen, mate? It's inevitable. I'm, I'm, yep. That's just going to ha- That's going to be the way. Unfortunately, that's going to be the way. To be fair, Andy was putting it out right away for a new guy for West Park and he, he used me in that to try and yep. who to take. It was actually me that said I would go with Mick. Who's got now? Great manager, the boy at Hart, wasn't he? He was at Hart before that. Good good manager. So, I would then come in here, into the Rock, mate, and 
the big, it was a big debacle about what was going on, oh, he's sacked all the rock, he's done yeah. this and he's done that, and I mean, it's a lot to take because the fans in here are absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Um, but, lovable bonkers. Oh, they're, 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 they're a good bonkers. And they're, all, they're all my take of people, so I love that side. Aye. But, they don't always know everything that's happening, but they'll make their own story on it. Oh, so, aye. So, we were having to... I was coming in here with West Park players, now what I see to the West Park players, and I hope people watching this make all that, so that's what happened, instead of making up your end crap, but what actually it's happened, going to happen, especially with social media mate, I know, so what actually happened was, I said to the boys that we had signed for the third division, I said listen lads, you, you and you and you will come with me to the rock, yep. but to hold, don't hold me to this, because if I get there, and what I'll see at the rock is better than what you're producing, yeah, then you'll no be there. So understand what I'm saying is. I didn't lie about it, I didn't hide for it. I said, I'm going to take his way, me. But ultimately, I need to make a team for the first division. You, you, you've taken players with you that you, you believe that will play for you. And, so, you know, sometimes you might not have first division players, but sometimes they might just play like first division players, you know. And right. I think like, you get you get that. Managers so, have loyalties to players. And aye. So people questioned that. it. So I came in with 12 West Park players and got here and there was... 16 or something um, rock players. Yep. So I met up with them on the Friday night, the rock players in here on the Friday. I gave them my spiel about how I'm going to run this, yep. how it's been run beforehand, and all the rest of it. I said, Look, this is my rules, this is how I work, this is what I do. Um, if you don't buy into that, don't come back. Don't give me your crap, I don't want to hear it. I think most managers would do that. I, I think that's how so they approach it. I, I said to them, I, I said to them about People obviously have different rules and regs and how they work, and, yeah. and my process has always been the same. I like the idea that if you're at training on Monday and th Thursday, then you have, you're you eligible to play in my team on Saturday. Aye. But if you're not there Monday and only on Thursday, then you're eligible to go on the bench. Aye. And you'll not be playing. Unless there's a good reason, of course. Aye. 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 And that reason has to be good. Has right? to be a good so reason. It, it can't be that McGannis dog died, because <laughs> that's what I've heard before. Oh, so so I've, had, I've, I've, had, I've had players at amateur level that's. Aye. Grand, grand's died five times, and you're yeah, wondering how many grands has this person Aye. got, you know? So you've yeah, heard yeah. it all before, Aye. I mean, so I explained that to them. So that was 16 or 17 players in there on the Friday night. I said to them, we'll start training on Monday. And when we turned up on the Monday, I think I maybe had 11 of them. So a couple had already kind of shit and sell out into other clubs and stuff Aye. in the background that I didn't know about. And that was going on and that was well, and that's fine, that's fair. So we were up training with 24 bodies between West Park, couple were trying to get in, and then the, the rock players. And then gradually we started to pick out the bones at all. And I think, I mean, people, I don't even know the numbers of this, but I think we've got three for the rock left. I think I've got five for West Park. And then the rest I'm just kind of pulling about for this is the world we're living in now. I keep saying this all the time, like, everybody, I mean, we we all personally know that St. Rocks is a massive club, right? Huge, it's huge massive, mate. and it's absolutely crazy, right? But, it doesn't live in that world. It doesn't. The, the world we're living in to compete with is, I don't think people believe you. Believe me when I tell you this. We're phoning players and asking players, how do you feel about this, blah, blah, blah. And you're, mm -hmm. you're, the first thing they come out of their mouth, usual, isn't it? Much. Much. And so that's happening a lot these days. As soon as you say, it. mate, as soon as you say a, pr a, a price and all that, pff, don't phone me back, mate. Getting priced out. I think, like, I, I think every manager in, in the first division would be looking at Johnson Burr and going, please just get promoted this season. Absolutely. And I, I, I genuinely feel that that would be the case. Just please get promoted this season. So people assume already Johnson Burr are up, so there's, like t there's two places. You mentioned. Uh, the St Rocks fans um, being bonkers, but a good bonkers as you said. Um, flicking through social media, you, you are quite vocal and going back to the performance on Saturday, 6-1 was it? 6-2 against Lorton Hibs. Never been beaten on the puff. And I kind of think you, 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 you said that, didn't you? You, you came on and on your social media and apologised to, to, to the fans. Absolutely. Aye. Is that is that something you feel given that you know because I know because I as I said I was involved with St Cadets last year and we came here and and uh, beat them five 0 but I think it was four 0 within thirty minutes and the crowd got right on their backs now I made a good stuff but if I'm on that part four 0 down and the fans are mad 
essentially at you. My ass is going to collapse me, and, <laughs> and I'm no dealing with that, right? right. I, I'm no dealing with it, and and I don't think St. Rocks did that day. Um, it's no a hindrance because the, the fans are absolutely phenomenal. But as a manager, do you see yourself? Do you feel the need to come out to the fans and go? Like we are really, really sorry because sure, because because you you can't take full responsibility. Players on the park have to take a bit no, of they responsibility. Take responsibility. Aye. No, good. so so what happens is so I've got real good relationships with the committee and the fans, yeah. and I talk to them. But you can't talk to one person no. and it, it gets about. It doesn't let it out there, does it? So and it, what it could be that other person's story as well. So it's so, like it's so I suppose going on social media and so for pieces for that thing. point of view. My point of view on that, mate, is if I'm being honest, is our game on Saturday was one of the freak games, right? Yeah. It's a really freak game. See, if we played them at night, we would, uh, uh, and no disrespect to Thornton Hibs, and I mean that, but if we played them at night, we would take five after them yeah. and nobody would say anything about it, right? Yeah. We were 1 0 up in half an hour, mate. Half an hour, and I'm, I guarantee you, if you've seen the, the clips, I don't know if you have, or if it's out there, I would get, I would write, and it was 80 20 possession yeah, for right. us. It was 1 0 up. We lost a free kick. 30 yards out or 20 odd yards out and the boys put it in the stanchion to make it one each, right? That's in 34 minutes and at 45 minutes Big Chucky will put his hands up to take his cell he's yeah. had a howler he's strangled the guy in the box and gave a penalty so we're getting 2 man down unbelievably with 80-20 possession Did Chucky get sent off? No, no. Ben Dealer get sent off later but then we came out we started still in the dressing room and I said to him you'll be alright don't worry we'll be alright we'll be fine because we're playing well yeah. we're doing alright and we went out in the first two minutes of the second half, my wee left back, he's no left back, slipped, tried to do something, and the boys cracked it right in the net and 3 1. And then he'd started to go. Aye. Now, my pro what I'm apologising for, I'm not apologising for my boys. I'm on the, I've got their back, I don't, I'm not apologising for them. What I'm apologising for is the candy van spending all their money to travel to Fife. Yeah. And coming up there. And, and watch us, that. and watch us capitulate the way we did, right? Yep. I was wanting more for the boys, more. I was looking for a bit more guile and a bit more determination to get back in the game. I felt when it went three one, we went, oh, shit, this game's away, man. And I wanted more fight for that. So my apology was for the rock fans to say, I know you've spent cash here, you've spent your Saturday travelling up here and travelling back. I'm apologising for that. So we played Glen Afton up here. And a pre-season friendly, and we won people in one now. I had people messaging me on Twitter, privately, mm -hmm. saying, we're going to win the league, big man, thanks very much, can't wait. And I went, Pre pressure's immediately and then, isn't it? I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down right? And then, we go and get pumped half of Canberra Jairs, and the same people who's messaging me saying I'm going to win the league, is now messaging me saying, you're getting the fucking sack next week. <laughs> we're getting relegated. We're ah. getting relegated. <laughs> And that's football. Aye. Now it's fickle as anything, as we know, but it's never going to change. We can only keep... My, my big thing to the, the Candy fans is... We're a massive club. We're in a rebuild. I didn't build... I don't mean I didn't build. We didn't build West Park in a year. No. This is going to take me... This is going to take me at least this season. Aye. To... Evaluate playing in the first division every week. Yeah, I've watched it for the side, but I'm now involved in it. And there's a differences to the third division, the fourth division, and the first division. Oh, Absolutely. I, do you know? I mean, that's just the best of Scotland. You're going. Every team th can beat everybody, and that showed. We used beating Bema last year. You know, I'm trying to think of other sort of notable results. You know, Mabel. You know, coming up to. To well, the borough well, and absolutely doing them in like and, on their own park, you know it's. it's and this is the thing, isn't it? People are like people are coming. We played shots out there, the top of the league. So we playing shots. It's one each, and the boys at shots, I hope, would tell the truth and say, at one each we've got three, maybe four one on ones with the keeper. Yeah. And we don't take them. Aye. If we take them, we win the game and we're away again. Mm. We're thinking right, brilliant. Last kick of the ball, they get a corner. And they score for the corner, it's a bugs in the net, the ref was a whistle. And it's absolute calmness for shots winning. <clears throat> After that game, people are fucking slotting us and going, Aye. fucking cheating, fuck it. You don't actually realise how good a, a football team shots are, but as well. Like, you know? well I got slaughtered, I got a bit of hanging for this. So I, I think the boy for shots, I apologise to the boy for shots if he thinks I, I put this the wrong way. I did name, I put on Twitter, 
I said congratulations to Shots and all the rest of it. But I then said, us as a team need to deal with a long ball specialist better. Aye. Right? What I meant by that is, I didn't mean by Shots, I mean this league. Aye. And some, some teams we are playing, when they go long, and a lot of them are doing it, nah, they're do. going long, and they play the second ball, we're no reacting at that second ball. My team are too busy thinking about trying to play, and they're maybe no switched on to the ball or the tap all the Aye. time, and having to deal with the next ball. So that's what I was meaning, I was meaning we need to get rid. I've said it, and the boy, one of the boys for shots has come in and went, Oh, I didn't need bother. We're playing Barcelona today. Like, that, that's <laughs> not what I was insinuating. I was, I was talking to him. I'm putting it out to my team. I said we need to deal with us better yep. because we've been done with it a few times. So, so I go. I've always done the pro youth thing. So I've done it with Falkirk. Yeah. Obviously, my youngest was at Rangers, and I, I watched all that through the years, and I used to get into their training and all that. Yeah. And I've always went to watch the Marlock from the south. I always like to be in, just evolving with what happens next and how it goes. So obviously I've got Kenny Jarvis and Big Simo in with me this yep. year and brought them in and I said to them, look, why don't we go and start shitting about again and we'll just evolve with the things. I said, so let's look at the teams that are doing well. Aye. East Kilbride, I speak to Si and he, was, he speaks to Mick. Yep. So let's go up there, we'll go and try and have a couple of connects with him. Aye, so we're up there, brilliant ways, just having a look at it. It's no end in the money, we're just having a look at what their process is and what they're doing. I know Ricky Waddle at Carly Braves, Fort Ricky, come down big man absolutely Wait, magic ways yeah. watch them and then we'll, we'll, me and Simo were going to Morton today but Simo went down and had to stay at work and I couldn't get away and Simo went down and done a training session with Morton this morning oh, and so for me that's the way to go you just evolve with how you're going to and from, by the way learn off everybody by the way aye, I'm 50 and I'm, I'm, I'm not still learning you're not still learning mate but it's good that it's good that the Scottish clubs are open like that and I actually that you mentioned about that I, I, during Covid I went down and watched Arvo because um, they were local to me they, put, they, they were training in lock in at the, the polo centre you know and I was really really impressed you know what Mick done um, no getting really enough time to touch on the, the centenary stuff but for myself to St Rocks congratulations right. looked like an absolute belter of a, a day, it just looked unbelievable. Yeah. Brendan Rogers turning it, that must have been something else. Oh my god, man, mate, honestly. <laughs> I, so, seen Kieran Do- I had seen Kieran Dawman taking, tro- taking the trophy, he just looked, he was like, mate, just, just in pure awe. Mate, it was unbelievable. So, I mean, see, that, that's what I will say. See the work that the volunteers and yeah. committee have done up here, man, it's been absolutely, honestly, non And a Celtic state of mind, they put oh, an absolutely incredible. Paul John Dyke was there. absolutely unbelievable. Aye. Jerry Taylor, all the boys at, at, at at the, the podcast were amazing for the club, Aye. absolutely amazing. Willie Hawkey done everything. Tremendous. The boy, the boy Jim O'Brien, who played with the, the Rock, um, Jim's he sponsored us and took us off for breakfast and done a lot of things in here that people didn't see and it was they were all brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But Brendan coming was. <sighs> I just got a bit like icing on the cake material, isn't it, man? Mate, what, honestly, so see, and he's a, he is a nice guy. He's a brilliant guy. Once or twice before, you know. Mate, see when he came in, we thought. I thought to myself, he's just come off a plane from Malaga, mate. Oh, had he? Came straight from the airport, mate. Brilliant. So, we were thinking, I thought to myself, he's just going to come in, say the wave, hello. cheers lads, and out the door. Aye. Mate, I left here before him. Aye, he hung around, didn't he? I left and he was still here. Having a mad swally. Mate, no, <laughs> he did me a cut of tea. But, but he came into the dressing room with us, speaking to everybody. Brilliant, mate. It was absolutely brilliant. So he understands. He, obviously, a big Celtic man. And uh, and I, I know he copped it a bit tight at the beginning and things like that when he came back. Right. But he, he's a big Celtic man. He knows the connection with the clubs. You know what I mean? He knows that. Yeah. So um, Scott McDonald got it worse out there than him. I probably. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, you've touched on it very briefly uh, uh, throughout our wee chat um, and, and where you want to kind of go this season. But what is your aspirations? Just to kind of so uh, before before we finish up. Your so aspirations my, for the my season. aspirations would be so first and foremost, and we can't. I'm not going to fucking mess about it. So the committee said to me, survive the league this year. Right, okay. That's that's first and foremost. That's the first thing. And so that keeps you your job, mate. So <laughs> aye, well, you think we, we stay in it? <laughs> you think? <laughs> for, for, so to, to be fair, that's what. So they said to me, look. Well, obviously it's going to full rebuild. Yep. You're going to do this and do that. So it's going to take a bit of time. And I said, well, that has to be a guarantee because I'm leaving a wee mini legacy at such at West yeah, Park. Aye. I'm not coming here today, three months stunt, and you just go, well fuck this and the button right, see you later. Aye. I said, so I need to know that you've got my back, because I know that West Park definitely got my back. Yeah. So, and they said, I will got your back, blah, 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 and that's fine. And they they said to me, if you get through this season, 
and we survive, then the club was is happy because we'll then get to a financial state where we can be able to move on to the next bit. And that's fine. And that was alright. But then what happens is you get a couple of good wins and a couple of good victories and people see the way you're playing Aye. and they start to get excited and they go, Oh fucking hell, man. we might win this and that. What? And then you get pumped off the Camber Angels. And then you got pumped <laughs> off the Camber Angels, which was a kick right in the stones. But then, that was a learning. That one, after the Camber Jails game, we went away that week, that fall week training, we went away and said, we changed the process and yeah. we're going about this. And we did. And for there, we went on a nice wee, we've done, done alright. And then we started to dip again, and then we came back again, and then we've dipped again. So, aspirations, of course, the first and foremost, you need to survive in this league. That has to happen. Yep. That's just a, a god given. I think to myself, shots beat us with top of the league. Is shots going to remain at top of the league? Who we you argue? I don't know. Because every week in this league is just madness. It's right? very, very, very. Like I, I've argued with loads of people. I actually think it's probably the most competitive football league in Scotland. Well, I, I, I would say so. And I genuinely, I, I believe that. And I think it was, it was probably the exact same last year when it was the most competitive league in, in Scotland and the teams that I think people wanted out of it, i.e. I, you know, St Carrick's obviously spending a bit of money, yeah. uh, Gart Cairn obviously spending a bit of money and Bemba but uh, you know crept up right at the yeah. beginning uh, at the sort of halfway part of the season and they got up so and then people were thinking right it's probably a bit more of an open league this season yeah. and then boom Johnson Borough are <laughs> obviously spending a bit of dough and, and, and shots are finding a bit of form and you know uh, the, 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 the drum are doing well and, and teams that you know it's right. just and then I, I've watched you know Thorny would beat the drum and thinking to myself what is that and this, this isn't a disrespect to Goms because I love them to bits but I, I wasn't expecting you know Thorny would to go and turn the chop over on their own patch you just don't see that it doesn't happen well that's funny that you because know. I liked I've watched Goms' teams and I've always liked the way he goes about it tries that, to play football, tries to play he, football he, he, like always had, he always has sometimes he doesn't have the, the players that he needs to do aye I mean we were speaking about it because me and him were, we were actually talking about this because we're on much the same budget yeah so same idea, same, same, same kind of hanging on, Aye. rebuilding it. And I said that to him while we were talking about this. And I said, it's, it's absolutely madness, right? He goes there and, and wins there. Yeah. And scuds him about. And, and then you're like, oh, fuck, man, what happened to him? How can that happen? And then Peter Saul go and get humped off Ashfield. Yeah, they did. So, uh, Six or something. Uh, and I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, and they, then, they, they, they went and beat Canby Rangers. And, then, I, and, all, and then Drum Chapel went and beat Ashfield. And then Red Fruit beat Ashfield. So where do we go? Where do we sit? Where's our aspirations? And I, 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 I'm no joke when I say this. One game at a time, man. Yeah. I'll take a win. I think to myself, we gave short, shots a game out here. Yeah. Now, if they're the tap, the new, and that's the standard where we need to be, I would like to think we'll not be far away from them. Because... I'm learning after that defeat at Shorts and I'm, I'm hoping that the team will learn and we're still trying to pull in players here and there and try to fix wee things that we think is wrong. So if we can do that, I would like to think we'll be in the same area as Shorts. So if Thornwood, same, I, I like the way they're going about it. Johnson and Borough, will they keep going and just keep spending money and bring more players in? And Jamie will just go and get another couple of players. Oh, that's what I'm saying, and they'll not make me saying that because I'm probably with Jamie, it's all good. <laughs> Listen, listen, see, listen, to be fair, right? Everybody I, I, wants to be in that position, but of course today, uh, J Johnson Borough was one of the first teams I went to at the beginning of the season, and Jamie's always welcoming, and it, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're spending money, right? Football's football, and football players are football players. He said a completely rebuild, and he said he started Johnson Borough side with sixteen brand new players, right? Okay, Graham Dorns, you know, Dale, mm -hmm. Dell. Esplan, etc., etc. These are all good players, but they have to gel. There's no, no there's, there's no guarantee that they're going to, that they're going to, you know, hundred percent go, go and win games. Kendall, thanks very much, mate. No um, bother, thanks man. very much for coming no on. Worries, and man. All the best for the rest of the all season. Good, mate. Cheers.